Hi, it's Amy from Cruise Select and I'm here with Jeff Bridgen who is Head of Sales for Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. And um, first I'd like to say thank you for giving us um, some of your time to answer some of the questions. You're welcome. So um, obviously Jeff and I actually go uh, way back from the various Viking Masters <laughs> trips. <That's right. laughs> yeah. um, but uh, you previously worked on board um, for an awesome cruise line, didn't you? So uh, what do you remember most about your time on the fleet? Um, well, it's going back a little way now. Um, so uh, it was uh, it was near enough about 15 years ago now that I was uh, that I was working on board. But um, the uh, I suppose the things that stand out most was the fact that um, the, the the camaraderie I suppose of all the crew that were on board. I was uh, I was lucky enough to be there for uh, for a few years. We got along so well as crew. Um, and uh, I mean we worked hard, but uh, but we also had some good fun. And I think actually it was that that really resonated down to the uh, to, to the passengers as well and all the guests that we had on board and I think it's actually that that still remains today as, as one of the defining features I think that actually the, uh, the people that are on board ships actually enjoy being there really and that, and, and, and that makes a big difference to the guest experience that we have so yeah I think it was the it was the it was the fun factor I made some amazing friends when we uh, when we were on there some that I'm still good friends with today um, and, uh, and equally, I actually got to travel around the world. I mean, we've got some amazing itineraries, and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, to experience a good number of them, really. So, yeah. yeah. And which would be um, fleet were you uh, working on, and what was your role? Uh, primarily, I was on Braemar, mm -hmm. um, but I did spend quite a bit of time on uh, on Black Watch as well, and actually Black Prince, if we're going to go that far back, uh, for, uh, for those that, uh, that, 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 that remember. Um, I spent most of my time as a reception manager uh, on board, so... Uh, a little bit uh, behind the scenes in some respects, but um, but uh, trying to to make the uh, the guest experience as uh, as good as it could be from an operational point of view. Excellent. Thanks. You said um, that camaraderie is still the same that you've noticed, but um, since the 15 years that you're last um, working on the ships, what have you felt has changed with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, or um, what else has remained the same? Sure, well I think, I mean there has been changes, um, I'm uh, currently getting reacquainted with the ships again after having been away for, uh, for a little while, um, and I think that, that, that there's been quite a lot of change, but actually subtle changes, we've moved with the times, um, there's, uh, I mean some of, some of the uniforms have all been nicely refreshed, I think, I think the, 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 the service is equally as good as it's, uh, as, it, as it's ever been, but even things like the, the, the rib boats that we've put on board, moving with the times with that, so I think there's been some, some subtle changes and improvements over, over time but actually we've managed to hang on to the, the, the core of, uh, of the experience that we've delivered um, which is amazing because it was brilliant back then and I can honestly say it's, uh, it's, it's equally as good today. So, yeah, yeah we've always found that like, the food on bread has always been we say, reliably amazing and the service has always been really friendly and it's funny how even when I've gone on cruises um, sometimes you might not have been on that ship for perhaps like, a couple of years and you start to still remember. <laughs> Absolutely right. I think, I think actually it's um, you know I've been I've been privileged enough to, to have seen a lot of the industry um, over over the last few years and obviously with ships getting bigger and bigger it's actually really refreshing to see that, that our small ships have allowed us to continue with that with that intimacy whereby you know you, you, you know, the, 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 the crew on board actually get to know your name really quite quickly and then we'll remember it for, for, for anything up to years afterwards. <laughs> I don't know how they do it sometimes, it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing, but yeah, that's brilliant to hear, lovely. Yeah. Would you say that's what makes uh, Red Olsen Cruise Line so special? I think so. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I think again. I mean, the the, the, the industry generally is is, is moving towards uh, bigger bigger ships. Um, that seems to come with some divisiveness when it when it comes to, uh, to, to to holiday makers and those that are looking to go on cruises. So I think the fact that we've uh, we've maintained our small ship approach, uh, and because of that, we've also been able to maintain uh, food that frankly punches above its weight and is very very good um, and the the attention to detail that, uh, that our crew um, are able to deliver cruise after cruise to, uh, to guests um, is, is really what starts to set us uh, aside you know, and, 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 and equally then on top of that the fact that we've not restricted ourselves when it actually comes to some of our itinerary planning as well and so, so the, the, the smaller ships have enabled us to reach further out across the world and actually be able to get into smaller ports of call um, or even in the bigger places 
still go into smaller berths where, where you can actually be much closer to the destination and be able to walk into town as opposed to having to take uh, shuttle buses etc as well. So so I think the uh, the core values have been there, remain there and it's something that we're really trying to embrace into the future as well. So. Yeah, I mean, um, we've noticed about your itineraries um, really, I think, the ante of the last few years and um, I mean, you've won the... Um, So they've got staunch um, following, but what, would you, what advice would you say to someone who's perhaps not cruised on Ferrells before? What would you, um, any tips, what advice would you say to them? Well, I think, I mean, firstly, I think that the cruise industry generally is quite, is, is a broad industry, you know, and there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of offerings out there. So I think that, that the first thing would be to, to look into what type of cruise experience you actually want. You know, again, there's, a, there's an inherent trend for going with, uh, with, with bigger ships. Um, arguably, they might say that they have more facilities on there. But actually, adversely to that, then actually our smaller ships have some amazing benefits that, that need to be considered um, in as much as the attention to the detail, in as much as our ability to be able to, to, be able to provide standard food that, that really is exceptional, but, but also the fact that our smaller ships and our uh, more dynamic way of actually being able to look at the ports of call can take guests much further into some of the experiences and, and also our, our tours team um, have been spending quite a lot of time doing much more research into some of these places to make sure that we're, we're delivering more of a cultural experience as opposed to just the standard once around the city on a, on a bus and back to the ship for lunchtime. Um, which, don't get me wrong, you can still do, but actually if you do want to get further in depth then, then we've really tried to expand that, that, that offering as well. So I think that for those that really want to get involved with small ship cruising and sharing your holiday with fewer people, then we can really offer something a bit different. So you said there that there's, um, some people think you've got a bigger ship, that means more um, facilities, more stuff to do on board. Um, would you say that is one of the most common mis uh, misconceptions about Fredolson cruise lines or are there any others that you think um, people have this perception of cruise and Fredolson which just isn't true? I think there is um, a preconceived idea at times um, from those that haven't sailed with us that, um, that potentially there isn't a vast amount to do on board, that you're going to be there with your, uh, with your book and not a lot else. Um, and it's not true. I mean, actually, we put quite a lot into our enrichment programs. The, the daily activities that are going on on sea days uh, are really quite encompassing. Um, but let's also remember the fact that you know, we do have speciality dining on board. We do have lighter dining alternatives as well as the main dining rooms. Um, but, but it's also about the destination. I mean, most people choose a cruise holiday for the destination. And actually, when you really get into, uh, into the depth of it, we're able to deliver something that is quite exceptional from that point of view. Um, and whilst it does mean that potentially no, you're not able to eat in one of 22 restaurants, um, there is enough choice on board to really give a, a dynamic onboard experience, but equally then can take you into the heart of some of the destinations because of the small size of the ships. And um, what are you most excited about for Fred Austin Cruise Lines and your new role? Um, I think that the exciting aspect of it all is exactly what, what goes into the into the future. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm new back into the role. Um, there's recently been uh, uh, news reports of, of, of the fact that, uh, that, that our, uh, our friend and colleague Peter Deere is now taking on the, 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 the reins as managing director. Um, we've got some exciting times ahead. Um, we haven't sat back. I know that we haven't necessarily bought brand new ships uh, on board as late, but, but actually you can see that the, the development that we've put into the fleet that we've currently got we're currently looking to see what the market is, is like as far as ocean ships. We've brought on um, Brabant in, on the river market and we're expanding further into, uh, into the river. So um, with, uh, with, with new people um, coming through the business but also a new approach to everything, I think the, uh, the future is very exciting for Ferrells and Cruise Lines. Yeah, I mean you mentioned about how you're um, bringing some changes on the board and I think mean, there's a lot of stuff about Ferrells and Cruise Lines that people sort of maybe not know about, like the gin tasting on board or um, the new, um, the, 
the Oriental Tea Rooms that I saw and then I was last in Boots there last um, September, there's some lovely things on and you said it's all part of the new future, it's all... Absolutely um, right, you know, yeah. And if anything, I think, I mean, we've, been, we've been a bit subtle, I think, in yeah. some of the ways that we've communicated yeah. some of this stuff, so I think there is more room um, for, uh, for bringing more of this, uh, more of these extra special things to, uh, to the forefront and that's something that, uh, that, that we're all working on, I think, as part of the, uh, the future communications. And now just one last question, it's probably the toughest. Go on. Do you have a favourite ship in the fleet? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's the hardest thing to, uh, to, 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 to be able to answer. Um, I think, not that I necessarily want to dodge the question here, Amy, but, but it's, it's, it's a very, very hard one to answer. Um, you know, I worked on a couple, of course I have an affinity towards a couple of the ships, but let's, let's be honest, we don't operate cookie-cutter vessels. And so each of the ships offers something that's just a little bit different, but will be with the with the same overall concept to take yeah. into detail. Um, so, and it has been said, it's, it's it's a bit like trying to pick your favourite child. So you can't really do it. Um, they're all pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> I always feel like that. It's coming back to a second home whenever I want board one of them. Which is wonderful yeah. to hear, and I think that is uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that really sets us apart. So it's lovely. Victor. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for your time, Jeff. You're welcome. Nice thank you. Nice to see you again. Cheers. Thank you.